Ladies and gentlemen, Gary Moore! It's very nice to have you with us. I, don't worry, no, I, I wouldn't do that to you. This, as you all know, is a cornet, which is nothing startling, except the backstage we have with it a cornet player, without which it would be useless. A rather unusual cornet player, uh, for many reasons, which we'll have to wait and find out about until after we've greeted our panel, here on To Tell the Truth. Peggy made the most Peggy remark to me when she came out. What did you say to me? I used to play the bugle. I did. And the... I believe it, you know. Wouldn't you believe that Peggy in a... school, and other girls are playing the cello, and there you are with a bugle. The drum and the Girl Scout drum and bugle corps. I played taps, and World War II broke out all over again. <laughs> it's really more ladylike to play a bugle than a cello. When you get like... Yeah, that's right. It's a little embarrassing, isn't it? Yeah. Well, what, what kind of a job would you think the fella could have where he could play the cornet while on the job, other than a professional musician. The bo boogie woogie bugle boy of Company B? That's uh. not, no, that's not. We could, we could be here all day guessing. Let's, let us find out. Cornet players, step forward. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Jack Kaufman. Number two. My name is Jack Kaufman. Number three. My name is Jack Kaufman. And as usual, our job is to find out which one is the real Jack Kaufman, which two are the fibbers, and this is the way the story goes. I, Jack Kaufman, am a taxi cab driver. When the traffic gets heavy and the mood is light, I serenade my passengers with spirited renditions of their favorite songs. <laughs> now, bear in mind, I do not sing these songs. I blast them out on a cornet. Not all my riders receive this gratuitous concert, only those in a receptive mood. Although, frankly, I don't play very well, it doesn't seem to bother my musically inclined fares. In fact, they're usually extra generous tippers. Admittedly, there are times when my trumpeting goes unappreciated. On one occasion, I parked near the city zoo. Nobody was around, so I decided to blow my own horn. And lo and behold, a police car pulled up and ordered me to stop. They claim I was disturbing the elephants. <laughs> Signed, Jack Kaufman. <laughs> and while we think about this problem, we'll pause and let the sponsor get things off his mind, and we'll be right back. Now, if you'll recall, we have over here three gentlemen all claiming to be Jack Kaufman, a cornet-playing taxi driver. And, uh, well, why not start with Peggy Cash? You'd love this kind of thing, wouldn't you, Peggy? <laughs> oh, yeah, really, girl? just love it. Now, it says when the traffic gets heavy and the mood is light, you play your cornet. But doesn't the mood sometimes get heavy, number one, when you blast off on your cornet? Sometimes, yeah. Uh, number two, at what time of the day do you start the festivities? Well, it depends. Usually I drive at night and begin around the uh, witching hour. You don't, begin, you don't begin driving till 12 o'clock at night? I begin at 12 at night. Oh, well, number three, nobody minds if they're out for 12 o'clock at night. They're probably feeling all right anyway. They can take that kind of noise. Is that true? Are you talking number three? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, number one, has anybody ever said, listen, drive up to the police station or else, like, I drive up to Bellevue. I wanted to have you have a serious talk with somebody inside. I mean, if customers ever really, number one, wanted to, uh, wanted to have you subject to disapproval by the powers that be yeah they've written letters about you <laughs> no but they've tried to uh um, um they put in complaints to the cab board oh now mm. number three your hat isn't exactly like every any other cab driver's hat i've ever seen it looks more like a shower cap did you have that hat made specially for you no it's the top of that yellow cab hat over there yeah i know but why did you take off the bottom well uh i don't know it just uh Oh, like the the deep light spirit. Yeah. <laughs> Golly, we're learning a lot. Wow. Hey, Nips. Uh, number two, where's the uh, hack license bureau? 
Well, I drive in Houston, Texas. I don't... <clears throat> oh, you drive in Houston, Texas? Yeah. It's a fine time to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, do you have a noise abatement program in Houston? I drive in Denver. You drive in Denver. <laughs> What country do you drive? <laughs> Who's your favorite trumpeter, number one? Uh, Miles. Miles Davis? Yeah. What is distinctive about Miles playing that uh, is so different from other trumpet players? Um, it's, um, it's corny to say so, but it's... Does just he play nothing. very much in a high register? No. Uh-huh. Number two, um, what's, what is the embouchure? Lip. The lip. whole lip? Yeah. Number three? Part of the lip you play with. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, number one, what's the name of the fleet, uh, the cab fleet that you drive for? Yellow. I don't drive, I, I drive the yellow cab. You're a yellow cab driver. Right. You got a lot of heart. I run you a play lot. trumpet at night. You're not really yellow. <laughs> I run a lot. All right, no, no. Thank you, Nipsey. Let's go to Anita Gillette. <laughs> Uh, number one, what is the name of the company of your yellow cab company? Yellow cab company. The yellow cab yes. company. There's no other little name on the side of the door? No, All just right. 60 cents. <laughs> <laughs> number two, has anybody ever gotten hostile when you uh, started blowing out on this bugle? Oh, yes. I mean, cornet. Oh, well, I had somebody uh, try to jump out of the cab while it was still moving. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> number three, has that ever happened to you? Uh, have they jumped out of the cab when I was moving? No. Uh, no, I meant, has anybody ever gotten yeah. hostile? Yeah, yeah, I, I played a funeral march for somebody once, and they called in on me. <laughs> Number they one, what is your favorite song? <laughs> you mean, well... To play. I mean, in, that you in, feel you really do good, you in, know? In the cab? Yes. Sugar Blues. Sugar Blues. Yeah. Number number two, uh, what is your favorite song? I like to play When the Red Red Robins Come Bob Bob Bobbing Along. <laughs> you oh, don't mean my. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, number three, what made you start uh, just playing this thing? Did you figure you'd just get more fares, or is it really something you really dig doing? Well, uh, you, get a lot of, you get a lot of dead time, and it's something nice to do when you've got time to do it with. You sometimes get the feeling that this whole thing isn't happening. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go down to Bill Cullen. We got, yes, Bill. We got to, uh, from every, uh, number one, everyone else told us where they drove. Where do you drive? San Diego. Uh, and, and number one, what is your purpose? Uh, why do you, per, in other words, why do you take your cornet to work with you? I mean, you must be able to spend your time in another way. You, you said you didn't play well. Well, I enjoy playing. Uh-huh. And uh, my wife doesn't enjoy me practicing. So I practice while I play in you my cab. You figure you got a captive audience <laughs> right. in the back of the cab. Now, number three, uh, has this, uh, as far as you can determine, affected your tips, uh, made them larger or smaller or what? Sure. Number three. A little, your, your tips. little larger. Your, you think people will give you more if you play well? Yeah, I don't really do it for the tips, though. So. Number two, do you find that, that, let's use the word, drunks are more receptive to your form of entertainment uh, than uh, busy businessmen? Yeah. I do. I find them the most receptive. As a matter of fact, I got my largest tip from a drunk. <laughs> and there goes our little musical bell, which cuts off all the questioning and allows us to mark our ballots. And we got to decide whether we think it's number one, or number two, or number three. And you know that we pay $50 for each wrong vote. We pay $500 if the whole thing goes gurgling down the drain. And with everybody's ballot marked, uh, Peggy starts. Well, I would never have voted for him except that he comes from San Diego. San Diego has a terrific zoo where the elephants are certainly more important than the people. Cabs are very expensive in San Diego. I took one once. It was nine bucks. I almost fainted. And sailors live in San Diego. Yeah. And, and they love cornet music at 4 o'clock in the morning. So I voted for number one. Sound thinking all down the line. We got a one showing. Nipsey. <laughs> I arrived at my vote for number one a little less logically. Uh, Miles Davis's virtuosity is especially effective in the middle range, and trumpet players know that, so I just thought maybe it might be number one. There are ones, and no, Anita says it's not Well, like you that. see, I thought he was so obvious that I thought that was he was there to fool me, you know, and number two, I can't see his lip. Number three, he looks like he could have a nice embouchure, so I put on number three. <laughs> All right, a pair of ones and three. Bill Cullen, you're pensive. Well, you look at those three fellas there. All right. And, and you say, which one of these fellas would be crazy enough to carry a cornet and play it in a cab at you? And I don't know about you, but I come up with number three. He <laughs> Before you said that, you should have also looked at those three fellas and figured which one is most likely to give you a fat lip after yeah, the show is over. Glasses, you know. Yeah, all right. We have made our votes here, and so will the real. Jack Kaufman, please stand up. Ah, uh, oh, 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 there you go.
Wow. There you go. Thank you, Jack. Let's find out about your imposters, see who they are. Number one, sir, what is your real name? What do you do? My name is Dennis Zacker. I'm a fashion photographer in New York. Hey there, nice to have you. <laughs> Number two, you win some, you lose some. What, are you gonna, uh, what is your real name? What do you do? My name is Brent Mintz. I photograph dogs, ducks, and squirrels. <laughs> Says dolls, ducks, and squirrels. That's all, huh? Okay. That's your thing. That's what you do. Now, we're going to hear from Jack Kaufman. We're going to hear a solo. Now, imagine, friends, that it's a lovely moonlight night, and you've hired a cab, and you have your lady friend in the back seat, and things are going along nicely. And Jack pulls over to the side of the road, and Jack goes for us like this. Jack. Well, it can't be romantic or anything like that. How about, uh, let me see. <laughs> Jack, what town do you say you're playing? Denver. In Denver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll remember to walk when I get... Thank you, Jack, very much. And thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> he almost forgot his yellow cab yarmulke yeah. that he had there. Panel, just for the... for I shouldn't call this trivia. This is probably something that you know. In the 4-H clubs, what do the 4-H's stand for? Heart, Our health, hand, hand, and health. head. Head, heart, health, and hand. Hey, who health? Heart, 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 Now let's greet the girls from the 4-H clubs. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Linda Miller. Number two. My name is Linda Miller. Number three. My name is Linda Miller. All right, and let's listen while I read you the story of Linda Miller. She says, I, Linda Miller, am a member of a nationwide service organization known as the 4-H Clubs of America. During my seven-year career with 4-H, I have been involved with a whole series of new 4-H clubs. I've been elected county president and am now vice president of my state organization. Since I am part Indian myself, I have initiated a number of projects to make our Native Americans proud of their heritage. I have received a national award for my leadership in 4-H from President Richard M. Nixon. Today, 4-H is not just for farm youngsters, but also for those who live in towns, suburbs, and central city areas. The principles of 4-H are adaptable to all young people, whoever they are, wherever they live. Signed, Linda Miller. <laughs> And Anita Gillette, why don't you initiate the question? Okay, thank you. What three lovely young ladies they are. Aren't they pretty? Uh, number one, uh, from which Indian tribe are, is your uh, heritage? Flathead Indians. The Flathead Indians. Number two, uh, what kind of projects do you mean when you say uh, you are involved in projects uh, that, that, uh, that are, make us Americans proud of their heritage? What kind of projects, for instance? Well, uh, these projects, I spoke to groups about our American heritage, and that was my main project. And I also organized um, an Indian 4-H club in my county. I see. Number three, uh, it, is that the kind of project uh, you were involved with? Yes, I was involved with the Indian project also in the nutrition division. In the nutrition division? What, what does that mean? I worked with the Chippewas. Yes. And 
they have a problem with malnutrition. I see. Number and that takes us down to Bill Cullen, please. And number one, Gary asked what the 4-H's stand for, and I don't know whether we did get them right, but what, what, do the, what are the 4-H's in the 4-H club? Head, heart, hand, and health. You were right, sweetie. Did I say that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, number two, I was always a big city uh, youngster, and I came to another big city, and I never had an opportunity uh, to be in the 4-H club. Now, you mentioned that uh, you are moving them into suburban and uh, urban areas. How do you do that? I mean, what, what, how do big city kids participate in the 4-H uh, activities? Well, 4-H uh, is not all of agriculture like livestock. We have um, projects such as clothing or cooking, but let's say some of the m projects more relevant to city kids would be uh, like just group activities, such mm -hmm. as skating or something like that. Number number three, is there a 4-H club or a branch of the club in New York City, for instance? Yes, there is. Uh, how... And from Bill Cullum, we go to Peggy Cash. Number three, how many members does the 4-H club in New York City have? Do you have any idea? Because uh, there's not very much farming to be done here. No, I believe it has about 800 members. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, number, number two, now those 800 members, what do they do besides skate? Oh, well, no, they don't all. Okay, a 4 H can just be anything, any group that you want to make out of it. Like if you want to, um, oh, let's see. I dig. I mean, I understand. I really mm -hmm. do. Now, number number one, they said they, they, were, they were in for the Indian forage thing. What is that? Indian what? But I thought she said forage. Sounds like you're going through the woods looking for nuts. <laughs> you oh, do that I, in the city. I've got to say, yes, you do that in Central Park. <laughs> no, the only... The only involvement that I had with the Indians was that I established workshops on Browning Reservation in Montana and clothing workshops, and out of that, the kids themselves decided that they wanted to form a 4-H club. Oh, it was 4-H. I thought it was forage. No, see, it's 4-H oh, yeah. <laughs> You mean all this time? Just oh, now you're guessing. You mean for the last 10 minutes? I thought of people running through the woods looking for food. <laughs> Understand how it would work. For 10 minutes, work. you haven't understood the whole show. Shut up. Huh? I've got enough of you. <laughs> All right, then with the kids. buzzer, let's go. <laughs> I didn't like the bugle either. <laughs> That's the most marvelous thing that's ever happened. All right, Nipsey, what do you want to know? <laughs> oh, I know what I'm doing here. Uh, number two, who's the county agent in your, in your county? Um, the county ex extension agent is Mr. Kirkbride. Uh, num number one, uh, you, you spoke in the affidavit about uh, your American heritage. I know uh, Americans who have Indian heritage. What American heritage does an Indian have? He's the first American. I see. <laughs> num number three, what branch of the government certifies the purity and the grading of foods, beef, products of that kind? <laughs> Food and Drug Administration. Food and Drug Administration. Number uh, one. Uh, who is the veterinarian in your county? His name is Langbell, Mr. Langbell. Do you own any... A I'm sorry, that little bell knocks us off. We must now mark our ballots and decide whether we think it's number one, or number two, or number three. I think everybody's got a number down on their little card, and if so, we'll start with... Uh, oh, you haven't decided, Nipsey. I have, not You've got not decided, but I've written a number. All right. Anita, start. Well, I, I, at first I thought it was number one, you know, because she's so, she looks like she's 4-H, but after I started talking, she seems like an actress to me, so I, I, I think it's number two. Okay, we got a two, Sean, we go down to Bill Cullen. Yeah, they all know more about 4-H than I do, but I, number two seems so natural in everything she said. I mean, she was speaking naturally, she didn't seem to be uh, thinking, you know, just spoke naturally, and for that reason, I too voted for number two. Peggy, were you able to arrive at any decision for any reason whatsoever? Well, if we were all starving to death and I had to go forage, I'd want to forage with two. So I'm over. All right, so far we've got, oh, everybody's going that way. Nips, are you making it unanimous? No, if I had a wigwam or a farmhouse, either one of these maidens would fit well. But I took number three because she said the least, and that's a commendable attribute in England. Especially in England. All right, the votes are all in. Will the real Linda Miller please stand up? Almost a clean sweep. Thank you, Linda. 
Let's find out about your friends. Number one, you had me taken in with Mr. Lion Beck and all those folks. <laughs> what is your real name? What do you do? Uh, my name is Carlino Osorio, and I'm a photographer at the Auto Pub here in New York. Oh, good. And number three, please tell us about yourself. My name is Laura Kane, and I'm a uh, secretary at the European Health Clubs in New York City. Good place. <laughs> Linda, two things we'd like to establish. Where are you really from, and what is your, what is your Indian background? I am from Morris, Oklahoma, which is a small town in Okmulgee County, 50 uh. miles south of Tulsa. Uh -huh. And I am an eighth Indian, part Creek and part Cherokee. So, uh, part Creek and part, you're a creek uh -huh. chief, in effect, then. Uh -huh. Thank you very much, Linda. You're very cute, and so are the rest of you. Thanks an awful lot for being with us. I have just been given the distressing news that we have 30 seconds, uh, for oh. heaven's sake, uh, and which is marvelous on the occasions when you have something to talk about for 30 seconds. <laughs> but in as much as I really have ten seconds, three, two, bye. <laughs> Our central characters today will receive the Samsonite Classic Attaché case, featuring a color-coordinated portfolio and exterior, light, strong magnesium frames, and stuff and stain-resistant cover from Samsonite. Promotional consideration provided by Best Western Motels, the nation's largest chain of 1,200 fine owner-operated motels in 900 cities from coast to coast. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth. Come on, Goodson, Bill Trotman, put up.